I'm not sure if it's the translation or if it's Seep's personal headcanon, but I like that Terry is just this huge, super giddy dope in this game for some reason. He's just the biggest dork. This is the first level in the game with pits, and as with pretty much every other beat-em-up in history, we can kill enemies instantly by hurling them into the pits. Of course, they can also kill us instantly. But it's kind of easy to avoid that. Jump kicks aside, none of the attacks the enemies use really knock us back very far. Speaking of jump kicks, these new enemies we're seeing right here, hold on. Yeah, that guy on the left. These guys love to jump kick like it's going out of style. So while we're fighting a whole horde of enemies, we can't just punch them all in a row like we normally would because these guys will jump right at us from the back of the group. We have to make a bit of an effort to separate them. They can of course be punched out of the air where we can block their jump kicks just like any other enemy, but the best solution is really just to evade. Something that absolutely does not work in this game is trying to jump kick to cancel out your enemy's jump kick, because theirs will always cancel out yours. There's always that random death scream right there, coming from nowhere. It seems to be triggered by the scrolling, and I'm not sure why. I'm just talking about the death screen because you know how this guy works already. And they're still using him as a single enemy, even though he is not challenging at all. Aside from the nifty bullet train in the background, this part of the stage only differs in the quantity of enemies we have to fight. By which I mean, in addition to fighting a greater number of our new jump kick happy foes, we'll also be tussling with every other enemy we've met so far. Fighting more than one of these guys at a time, especially if they're all facing towards you, can be rather difficult, but if you're used to this game's design, you've probably accumulated quite a few extra lives. And then there's this weird area right here where we just fight a whole bunch of enemies we've already seen, with no new real additions. Like I said, the game is going to continue using this big guy as though he's a difficult enemy, even by himself, though that will stop after this next stage. Not this one, the one after this one. And we're just going to beat some more on some of the earliest enemies we've seen, for nostalgia's sake, I guess. Even though this level is designed around only a single new enemy, I think it holds up much better than the previous one. The reason being that each one of these guys is pretty much as difficult as Duck King, just with, you know, a smaller health bar. Fun fact, there are no health pickups in this stage. Not a single one. Health pickups become increasingly more sparse as the game goes on, though we do get a much better equivalent here in the form of a 1-up. We'll have back our 4 life buffer in no time. And we're again just left fighting one of these big guys alone, this time through virtue of them having a higher health bar. I pick a whole lot on these enemies, but they'll have their time to shine in the next stage. I wonder if there are this many trash cans in the subway in real life. If not, then that might be a good idea. I find it's often very hard to throw enemies into each other in this game because the hitboxes seem a little weird, but that one kinda lined up perfectly. This is definitely the hardest part of the level. It was also definitely the most satisfying. It probably should have been used as the last fight in the stage, as opposed to this bit in which we fight two of the easiest enemies and only one of the new enemies. It's time for us to face off against Hua Jai, Joe's rival. He will not attack us until he drinks some of his power drink, which SNK has stated does not contain alcohol or soda. Hua Jai really only has one attack, that flaming knee he just used, but he telegraphs it very, very briefly. Then 
The idea is that you need to block right as you see him twitch, otherwise he'll knock you down and then continue to combo you as you get back up. And if he does manage to both knock you down and combo you, then, well, there goes half your health bar. That seemed like kind of an appropriate ending. 